Welcome to Mr. V Teaching Math. In this session, I'm going to look at how to create the scale that goes on the side of your graph. Whether it's a bar graph, or a line graph, or a pictograph, or any other kind of graph, it doesn't really matter. What I want to focus on is the scale that goes here and how to create that accurately. The first thing you should do is use graph paper. It's way easier to create graphs on graph paper. The next thing you need to do is count how many squares you're going to work with along the side here. Now, I've chosen to work with a really easy number. I'm going to work with 10. Now, your, your space might be more limited in whatever work you're doing, or you might have more space. But I have 10 squares to work with. Next, find out the range of data that I have to include on this side. I also need to know whether it has to start at zero. Because if you remember, if you don't start at zero, there's something you have to do down here, which I will demonstrate in the third example I'll do. So let's say for this case, I'm going to be working with a range that goes from zero to 47. I don't know what the data is, it's just something that goes from zero to 47 along the side. I find out what the range is, what's the difference between the lowest and the highest number. This is really easy because it starts at zero. The range is 47. So I have a range of 47. What I'm going to do to find out what one square on my graph is going to be worth is simply take my 47 and divide it by 10. So I take my range, which is 47, and I divide by 10. This comes out, quite simply, to 4.7. Now, I could attempt to create a graph in which each square is 4.7 in size, and then this would be 4.7 here, and this would come out to 9.4, and so on. But that's going to make it way more complicated. So I'm going to round this up to an easy number. In this case, I'm going to go to 5. So I'm starting at 0, and I know that each square is going to be worth 5 since I've rounded this up. Now I'm always looking for shortcuts. Rather than writing 5 on each square, I'm going to skip count. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. This graph has enough room to have 47 on it without having to go off the top of the graph, all my data will fit from 0 to 47 inside that range. Let me do another example. This time, again, I'm going to be working with 10 squares. Let's say my range of data, though, is from 0 to 11,745, which gives me a range of 11,000. 745. Once again, divide by the number of squares I have, and that will tell me that each square needs to be worth 11,745. Once again, I could make each square exactly worth that, but that would make it a little bit more complicated than I would like. So again, I'm going to round this up to an easy number. I could do 1,200, and that would work, and I would have a relatively good scale along the side, but again, I'm looking for even easier numbers to work with. So I'm going to go by 1500s. So this is going to be 1500. Again, I'm going to skip count. Make that 3000. This will be 4500. 6000. 9000. 12000. And 15000. This will fit right up in this range, right up here, which is a nice, suitable height of the graph. If I wanted to make a slightly better graph, I would make each square 1,200, and that would move this up to the top. Now for my third example. In this example, we're going to have a slightly different range. <clears throat> Again, I'm working with 10 squares because it's easy. This time, I have to start not at 0. My range from the lowest, 756, to the highest at 1,732. So, I have to calculate the range. I do that by finding the difference. I subtract these two numbers, and I discover that the range between these two numbers is 976. I, I took this, I subtracted that from it. This gives me the range. Again, I'm going to divide by 10, because I have 10 squares. I can come out to 97.6. This is what each square needs to be worth. Again, let's round it to an easy number, 100. Now, before I start, 
every graph must start at zero. However, my data set doesn't start at zero. So there's a symbol that I need to put here. That's the symbol I need to put there to indicate that I'm not starting at zero. So each square is going to be worth 100. If I have to record 756, I could start at 756, but then when I go up by hundreds, it's going to be 856, 956, 1056. So again, I'm going to round this. I could round it down to 750. I could round it to 700. I think I'm going to go with 750. Again, I could make every single square with 97.6, then six, but then the math gets pretty complicated. Again, I'm going to round to hundreds. So, 850, 950, 1050, 1150, 1250, 1350, 1450, 1550, 1650, 1750. And as you can see, I need to extend this line just a little bit. And whenever you're doing a graph, you should use a straight edge, not freehand. And that's how to calculate a scale along the side of a graph.